live from Washington, D.C. The Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception and the Eternal Word Television Network present the Solemn Mass of the Lord's Supper. With His Eminence, Christophe Cardinal Pierre, Apostolic Nuncio to the United States as celebrant and homilist.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, who have called us to participate in the most sacred supper in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the Church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel on the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish you may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight it is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, Fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a, bas a basin and began to wash the feet of his disciples and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I'm doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, master, then not only my feet, but my hand and head as well. Jesus said to him, whoever has, has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For in you who would betray him, for this reason he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed, I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash what one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord.
dear brothers and sisters, greetings to you as we enter in this sacred triduum. The three days in which the mysteries of our Lord's Passover from death to life are solemnly celebrated. As the Pope's representative to this country, I assure you that the Holy Father is spiritually close to you and works with you during these holidays. At the liturgy of Palm Sunday, we met Jesus as he began his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. He was hailed as king because indeed he is king, but his is a humble kingship. He rode into Jerusalem seated on a beast of burden. As the gospel of his passion was read, we saw that he was the one carrying the burden of the cross. And so we were reminded that Jesus only achieves the Father's glory by suffering, death at the hands of sinners. This is a different kind of kinship indeed. Tonight, we see that the humility of Jesus' kingship was no illusion. At the beginning of the Lord's hour, while seated with the apostles at the, at the Passover meal, he lowers himself into the position of a slave to wash the feet of his disciples. Simon Peter is scandalized, just as so many, even today, are scandalized by a power that is exercised through service instead of domination. By performing this action during the meal in which he instituted the Eucharist, Jesus teaches an essential lesson to us, to us, his church, our participation in the Eucharist must always be linked to humble charity toward our brothers and sisters. Early in the church history, the separation of sacrament from fraternal love was already an issue for the Christians at Corinth. Their factions among the people were on display when they came together to eat the Lord's Supper. In the second reading of this Mass, St. Paul teaches the Corinthians, and he teaches us, that our eating of the bread and drinking of the cup is a remembrance of the Lord, who gave himself for us out of love. Therefore, to divide ourselves from one another is to act in contradiction to the meaning of the Eucharist we celebrate. What does the humble charity of Jesus the King look like as the Last Supper? It is the love from the heart that show Jesus showed to all people. Even before his arrest, trial, and condemnation, the Lord is already, in a sense, handing himself over to sinners, since each of the 12 apostles were, among them was a sinner. They were obstinate in their failure to understand the mystery that was unfolding, especially the mystery of his impending death. Some were, would betray him bitterly including Judas and Simon Peter. Most of them would flee. Even when Jesus bent down to wash their feet, Peter first resisted and then misunderstood completely the gesture. At the very hour in which the Lord was most eagerly desired to eat this supper with them, 
their confounding ignorance and imperfections were on a heightened display. And what was the Lord's response? Love. Love. And unfeigned love. Let's take time tonight to meditate this moment. Jesus did not have drum up an artificial or grudging acceptance of this man. As we would say today, a kind of universal tolerance. No, that was not that. No. He had already come to love them so much that in spite of their failures, he was going to love them to the end. These are words of the scripture which we should keep in our mind. He was going to love them to the end. It is this love by our Lord in one way absolutely simple because it is divine and in another way completely confounding because he loved them humanly and genuinely. It is this love of our Lord that Jesus that we are invited today to contemplate. To admire. To be amazed at this night. And more than that, to enter into. In speaking of the practice of the Eucharistic adoration, Pope Francis said that this is what adoration means. And I quote, to worship, to immerse yourselves in divine love and give it to those you meet on your path. It is beautiful to worship in silence before the blessed sacrament, to be in the consoling presence of Jesus and there to draw the apostolic impetus to be instruments of goodness, instrument of tenderness and welcome in the community, in the church and in the world. At the conclusion of this Mass, the Blessed Sacrament will be carried to the place of adoration. Until midnight, many people, perhaps some of you who are here, will observe the custom of visiting various churches to spend time with Jesus in the Eucharist. This is a worthy tradition. I hope the churches will be open, isn't it? So you phone to your, your parish priest and you said, open the church because I want to visit it. You know? Yet to adore the Lord in this way would be missing something and something essential. If it were not joined by the kind of love that Jesus modeled for us on the first Holy Thursday night, a love from the heart, which makes us ready to give ourselves in humble acts of unity for a sister or a brother, a readiness to die to the grudge we hold <coughs> or to give up a condemning judgment that we make against another person, a willingness to presume the good of a person's intentions, when a choice once for all to forgive. The Lord's persevering love for the sinful apostles <coughs> is equaled for, by his deep and abiding love for you and me, a love which is signified by the washing of the feast which we will now enact. As we experience this ritual, may we see its connection with the Eucharist and how both of these actions call us 
to imitate the genuine self-giving love of our Lord. Amen.
Our Lord fulfilled the new commandment of love by laying down his life for our salvation. Confident in his goodness, we now offer our needs and those of the whole world. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, all bishops and priests, that through the grace of their ordination, they will be encouraged in faithful service to God's people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations will work toward true peace and make every effort to ensure free, freedom of religion and a greater respect for the sanctity of all human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our military personnel serving overseas, for law enforcement officers and fire and rescue workers, may God bless those who serve and protect our nation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are struggling or suffering, we pray especially for those affected by the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse in Baltimore, Maryland. May God's love and presence bring them consolation and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to war, violence, and terrorism in our communities and throughout the world, and for an ever greater respect for the dignity of all human life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who struggle with doubts and temptations may come to know the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist and be strengthened in their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church will be blessed with many vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, 
and consecrated religious life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our benefactors and for all the intentions enrolled in the National Shrine's Lenten Remembrance and Shrine Prayer Guild Novena, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our deceased loved ones will be welcomed to the eternal banquet prepared for them in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, hear the prayers of your church and grant us a deeper sharing in the mystery of your love, which we celebrate in this holy sacrament through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We invite you to use the envelopes provided in the pews or scan the QR code found in the worship leaflet or visit the National Shrine online as a means of sharing in our ministry at the Basilica of the National Shrine. Thank you for your continued support and generosity.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all souls of the Church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is solely right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as we attend, we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless this gift, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, my brother Wilton, the Bishop of this church, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our Lord and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sistus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosman and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protective help. Therefore, Lord, we pray graciously, accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate 
order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, <coughs> to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, on the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all that is today. He took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, this Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gift that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gift of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that this gift be borne by the hands of your holy angels to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through the participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace a fair heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, 
and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously. Grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy this banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever.